All right, so I thought I would just make a video for the lecture this week, just because it's going to be a dramatic shift from what we've been doing. Um, for the next uh, series, uh, we're going to be basically developing a website using uh, Dreamweaver. So uh, if you've been in the web class, uh, we do it all through Visual Studio Code. In this case, we're going to be using um, Dreamweaver instead uh, and doing it more from a WYSIWYG standpoint, which just means um, from a, uh, a, a visual way. What you see is what you get. Okay, so um, web design. Um, obviously, web design involves the planning, production, and application of websites. It's more concerned with the visual aspects and usability for the final web, uh, web pages. Um, basically, you'll see two primary terms. You'll see web design. You'll also see web um, uh, development. Um, development is more about the technology underneath, and it's like writing PHP and, and using SAS and all sorts of other different languages and such. Um, that's a little bit more advanced and would be more, I would say, like in the computer science almost department and not as much about the visuals. Um, you know, they would develop like the, the technology in order to make like a mortgage calculator or to in order to have like a button to buy items. Right. That sort of thing. Well, the web designer would be more concerned with the, the visual aesthetics of what the user sees as well as the user experience. Um, you can click on this article if you want uh, and read stuff. OK, um, web technology. So what you're going to find is that uh, when we look at the web, it's basically uh, when you look at a web page, even the one you're looking at now, um, what you are actually looking at are these three different documents, more or less. OK, there's HTML, hypertext markup language. Basically, that is the language that um, holds the content of the site. OK, um, actually, do I talk about that down here? Yeah, well, we'll just say it here anyways. It's what holds the content of the site. So basically. Uh, all your text is written in HTML, so all of the stuff you see here is written in HTML. Um, all the images are linked through HTML. Your hyperlinks are linked through HTML. Videos are embedded with HTML. That's what that part does. Um, and it's a markup language, uh, which means it wraps around the elements. Um, and I'll show you that in a second uh, in order to give uh, extra meaning. Uh, Cascade Style Sheets, um, or CSS, basically that uh, employs the design part of the web page. Meaning that's what changes the background color and what size this image should be and that this should be centered and that these should be bold and these should all be tabbed and these should all be left aligned and that things have borders or shadows, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's what the CSS. So look at that as design. So content, design, and then JavaScript is more or less the interactive and animation components. So anything that's going to be a little bit more complicated than just straight up visual is going to be handled by JavaScript. So if you want to have like an animated thing moving across the screen, you would more than likely write that in JavaScript. It is actually kind of possible in CSS3, but uh, most of the time you'll see that made in JavaScript. Or if you have like an interactive button that you can click on something and something happens, or like when they move the cursor around, those little particles that come off of it or anything like that. Um, anything that's a little bit more than just a flat uh, image is going to be handled uh, more or less by uh, JavaScript. Okay. Uh, for the most part, we're just going to handle these two. We will use JavaScript in this, but it will all be written for us. Um, we're not going to have to write any ourselves and we're not even really going to have to adjust any JavaScript. So uh, don't worry too much because this is like a full on scripting language where these are a little bit different. All right. So the HTML syntax, like I said before, it's hypertext um, markup language. Um, so what that means is that this is the content. So CSS says, that, well, let's do this. This is the first level main heading. That's what I want to write, but I wrap it inside this H1 and this H1. So an opening tag and a closing tag. And what that does is it says, this is a heading one, right? And then this says, this is a paragraph. That's the content, but I wrap it inside the opening and closing tag of this P element, which means this is a paragraph. And then subsequently those will be treated as those elements and they will be displayed that way. So like this, right, is a heading three. I don't know what it is, but you only see the result. But if you were to look at the code, you would see an H3 and an H3. So you see H3 and then a, a forward slash H3. That wraps around it and gives this extra meaning, right? Um, so like I said, most of the time you'll see an opening and a closing tag. And then you'll see the cut in between and all this together is considered an element, right? So this is one element. This is the next element. Oops. Uh, you know, uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is another element. This is another element. Now, some of them we have are what we call open elements. So notice that this one, it doesn't actually wrap around anything. It's just one statement all by itself. There's no closing tag. It's just this one. 
because it doesn't, there's no content goes inside of it. It's merely adding more information to the web page itself. Um, we can also nest elements inside of each other. So you'll notice that I have this title and then we have the head. You'll also notice that everything is going inside this HTML. So basically HTML, HTML, all the content goes inside of that. Then I have a head and I have a body. And basically inside of my head, I have these two elements and inside my body, I have all the actual text that you would see. Okay. So, um, so you also nest things. Uh, cascade style sheets, I already kind of said this, but more or less what that's going to do is it's going to um, add uh, a, a suit onto your bones. Uh, so you can kind of see an example here of how it would be written. Um, you would write style and then you would basically um, have ways, uh, you have CSS rules, right? And in those CSS rules, you'll have um, these declarations. Uh, you'll have a selector. So this is going to look into the body and then apply this to everything inside the body. So basically all the, all the typefaces will be Arial and the background color will be this color. Um, I don't, I, this is not written right. <laughs> those should uh, those should be commas. Whoops. Anyway, um, same thing here. Uh, then we have an, again a selector, and then it says anything that's an H1 is going to get basically a black or is that white? I guess that'd be white. It'd be a white color, which doesn't really make sense. Um, anyway, so that's basically how it works. You can see here's the CSS rule. So that's the entire thing as itself. It has two parts, the selector, which is the first part, and the declaration, which is um, the part afterwards. So these are both declarations, things that we're telling it to do. Um, and the CSS property is uh, basically you have the, the type here and then the value that you're giving it. Okay, so there are different types of ways of selecting things. Uh, we'll cover that more in depth later. Um, you can see right here, I'm mostly targeting things by just the type of elements, but it is also possible to give things special names by either class or ID selector. Um, so in here, basically what you can do is, let's say I have more than H1, then more than one H1 element, right? So um, like right here, I have two P elements, right? So let's say I have more than one H1 element. If I give it an ID, it will only select when I go to make my rule. If I, I don't have an example here, it will only select the, the one that says main heading and it will only apply to this and not the other H1 element. If I just said H1, all H1 elements would have it. Now, a class is sort of similar to an ID. It's a way of giving a name like this one has. However, um, a class you apply to more than one thing. So notice that this has food description and this has food description, which means when I target this class, it will affect both this one and this one, it will affect both of these. Now, when you apply a CSS model, you will see um, it uses the box model. And uh, more or less, it is all of these elements here. So you have the content itself so that you can adjust um, and you can adjust the height and the width. And, you know, depending on the type of content, whether it's bold or colored or whatever, you have the padding, which is between the content and its border. OK, um, and then you can have from the border to the, the to the next element is the margin. OK. Uh, you can click on this and you can see a complete list of all the CSS rules, but this is sort of the idea of it. You might want to come back to this once you've written a little bit um, because it might be a little confusing right now. Um, okay, so Dreamweaver. We're going to be using Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is more or less uh, a an application that is meant to write um, uh, web pages. Uh, it's meant for like hard coding web pages, meaning it's not dynamic content. Um, it's just static pages that you are creating but it has quite a few like when we use um we we usually use visual studio code but you could use any num any other number of text editors um dreamweaver has quite a few like shortcuts things that make it kind of a little bit easier you can just click buttons for it to write your elements as opposed to manually typing them out and even when you do manually type them out it will try to auto complete and it, it, it's very specifically used for web design as opposed to other text editors that are used for coding but not used for web design specifically um its biggest thing is that it's a WYSIWYG, which means what you see is what you get. I'll talk about that later, do I? No. What you see is what you get. Uh, and what it means is that basically you can work on your web page sort of in a visual manner, and it will also write the code for you. And as you write the code, you can see it in a visual manner. Um, one of the problems with Dreamweaver, and one of the reasons I don't teach it in the web design class, is that it requires an Adobe subscription. Um, so you can either use the school or you can you know, get your own uh, Adobe subscription. Uh, since we're having to use it for the other ones, I don't mind using it in this course, uh, but I usually try to avoid it in my web design course because that way um, you don't need to use it. And quite frankly, I don't use it when I write my web pages. 
Um, but it is very handy, particularly if you're a graphic designer, uh, you'll find this a bit easier to use. Um, so the, what happened here? I gotta, I gotta fix this. So um, what you're gonna do for the first assignment here is basically just do a uh, basic web page. So kind of a wireframe thing, just follow the tutorials. And then when you're done, um, you know, submit it just like you would um, anything else. All right, so good luck.